<laughs> what is up everyone first of all before we start i want to wish everyone a happy new year i hope 2024 will bring a lot of health a lot of wealth and um, a lot of good things on your uh, endeavors this year but don't be mistaken uh, progress is not linear it's ups and downs right so um but hey so basically i want to make a video real quick here um, not so long ago i made a video about the functional options pattern in golang let me quickly show you i recently uh, started to use some other pattern that i really like and i want to show you so uh, i'm here in the hollywood uh, open source framework and i have engine i'm going to show options i'm going to show you the functional options first real quick there's also a video i made a video about that because i also like that that pattern a lot but not in all use cases uh, so the video the link of that video is in the description down below um you can see here basically it's um ops is a structure right which holds all the uh options i would say and um yeah you can see the video basically if you really want to know how it works it's actually very simple uh but it's it's it gives you the opportunity to um get pass optional arguments into uh functions because golang doesn't have uh optional arguments right uh, so how does it actually work i think i have some uh, engine test real quick before i'm going to show you this other thing um let me show you with uh something decent actually do i have options test that's a question ops no we don't well that's fine uh where can i show you the best for for example here right so we spawn a function that you can you can spawn an actor here uh, an actor function and you can see that we pass uh, with start delay for example right and you can actually uh, pass more arguments for example uh, with id you can give it an id and you can uh, could be full or something don't really matter and you could give some other optional arguments for example with inbox size it's going to be 10 something like that right so uh, that's the optional pattern because you can also in this case basically delete everything yeah i'm so sorry i'm so lazy also uh, boom, just like that, and it's also going to work pretty fine, right? But recently, I'm starting to use the uh, builder pattern. Well, the builder pattern is something that is 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 very familiar in other languages, um, and you can use it basically in a couple of ways. But the way I'm using it, because I was recently also reading another uh, open source project, and they were using that configuration pattern that builder configuration pattern all over the place and actually i liked it so much that i started to adopt that also in some parts of uh, the hollywood framework so uh, let me open up a new main file real quick that i can show you how it actually works uh, new file here let's call main of course it's gonna delete that uh, later on uh, let's do package main here um so how does it work for example the first thing uh, you're gonna do is for example you have a server right gonna have a server as a structure and the server is gonna have an, a listen adder which is gonna be a string it's gonna have an ID for example uh, it's gonna be a string and maybe it's gonna have a name right something very simple right um, then you're gonna have something like this func new server right uh, which is gonna for example gonna return a pointer to a server and then an error or something uh, let's let's make an error it's a good uh, practice to return errors in these things just like that and we are gonna return here uh, and server and uh, nil here right so if you want to construct a new server uh, you probably need some configuration right and so we're going to say a config and this is going to be this uh, config struct if i can type right the next thing we're going to do is make a config here right config like i said the, the builder pattern you can you can uh basically do it in, in a lot of ways right so uh for example config is gonna hold uh, a listen adder it's gonna have a string um an id is gonna have a string and a name gonna have a string the next thing we're gonna do is actually the server doesn't need these things we can say config here is gonna hold a config and the next thing you do is provide a function a constructor function called new config that will initialize basically all the values to a default value right and not the default value for example an int is a is zero and a string is an empty string no the default configuration patterns your server is minimum is has, has to be has been required enabled to let it run <laughs> uh, so we're going to say func new config uh, which is going to return a config here right and we are going to return config just like that and we're going to say um, let's say id is going to be 
oh man, a random ID, it doesn't really matter, random ID, you're gonna say that the listen added is gonna be, I don't know, the, uh, 3000 holy grail of ports, and the name is gonna be a random name, right, just like that. Uh, nice. The next step is basically, so if we make a func main here, right, and we are gonna say config uh, is gonna be a uh, new configuration, and then we can say server, let's skip the error, is gonna be um, new server, actually to be honest, new server. do we have new server? Yeah, and we're gonna pass in this config, and ah, pff, I don't know, let's just print the server out, so we are, um, we are good here with the compiler, right? So that's that. So this will basically bootstrap uh, a default server, right? But what if the user wants to provide some configuration? Uh, what you're gonna do is this, func, for example, um, config. And I'm gonna show you a real world example after this, right? This is just mocking up stuff, just to be some, to give you uh, some inspiration uh, for yourself. So config, for example, with listen adder, uh, like that, it's gonna have an adder, it's gonna be a string, and we're gonna return just this config, right? So we're gonna say C listen adder is gonna be adder, and then we're gonna return C here, right? Just like that. And of course, we're gonna do this for these other things. Um, with ID, 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 of course, this needs to be ID, yeah. And the last one is gonna be with name, probably. Let's clear the search thingy with name, 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 uh, name, right? Something like this. Nice, so then the user can basically say, yo, I wanna actually use um, with ID foo with name bar, and maybe I want to have also with listen adder, right? I wanna have, I don't know, um, 66555 or something, right? And then it's basically gonna overwrite uh, this configuration and use the user's values. If the user doesn't want a name, you can delete it and it will use the default name, right? So basically that is the pattern I'm starting to like. You can do some variations, for example, some libraries do, um, instead of new server, can something be like that, where you could say that the config is going to be uh, a new default config, right? And then you could say func new server with config, uh, which will take a config, config, and it will also return a uh, server here, errors, something like that, and uh, something like, actually, yeah, you should actually make one simple uh, proxy function so you don't need to uh, duplicate this stuff here, right? Uh, like that, paste that in, boom, and then use the config that is being provided, right? Just like that. So that's a builder pattern. And I really start to like it. I also like that uh, the config is basically exposed here publicly, but the values are hidden. And that could be, some people like it, some people don't like it, but this basically means that you don't need to, um, you can just don't set them. You know what I mean? It's, it's discussionable. <laughs> you know what I mean? I like it private. Some people like it public because it doesn't actually matter. Yeah. Discussion for on Reddit, I think, you know, or, on, or on Twitter, right? We don't have time for these uh, shenanigans here. Um, yeah, cool, bullet pattern. So I'm using this in uh, cluster, in the cluster package. Uh, you can see this here. So we have uh, a config. Config holds the cluster configuration with a bunch of stuff here, a bunch of uh, configuration parameters. And then we're gonna make a new config. We'll basically initialize this to some default values. And then you're gonna say with request timeout, uh, with provider, with engine, with activation strategy, yada, 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 all that stuff. And then it holds basically a config here, the cluster. And if you do new, you need to provide a configuration, right? And let me open up um, member one, I think it's gonna be, boom. Here is how I use this config, a cluster new config with an ID, with a listen address, with a region, and then we just say cluster new config, and we call it a day. Um, I'm, to be honest, I'm, I'm starting to like the builder pattern more than the op functional options pattern, because for reasons actually, um, because it's more clear, like you always have a config, it's always going to be initialized, um, 
you don't need to do anything else it's it's clear for the user it's 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 just clear because if you look some if you look at it from from a function from from a reading perspective you see a function with a with a with this for example right you're going to see like uh, opts and then you see this option it's like our opts func it's just ah magic you know what i mean it, it it doesn't mean anything of course experienced developers we will know that but but still it's just not clear but if you say um that that your function always gonna gonna take a config it's 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 easy right it's basically you you're almost going to infer that the package you're using is going to have a new config in in as a as a function right so um that's why i like it way more and i'm starting to actually refactor the hollywood um framework to use um that builder builder pattern uh to be honest do i have uh let me show you github hollywood if you want to show give me some some we are at 600 stars already it's almost at its v1 stable release uh, it has some good shit especially if you want to know about the active framework i'm also uh posting a shit ton of videos on my patreon again uh, because i'm building this uh distributed uh application runner in the cloud on the edge uh, with wasm and all that stuff it's pretty nice um i'm building this on the stream but i'm also building this uh some parts of it i'm, I'm releasing like one video a day on patreon so if you want to see that check out the patreon um for that right okay cool so thanks for watching um have a very very good first week of the year and uh, i'm looking forward to see you in my next video or in my live streams cheers take care